Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Vicious, and welcome to a brand new video. Today it's gonna to be another HP Aruba S2500 switch video. This is the switch I've been featuring in a lot of videos as part of my upgrading your home network to 10 gigabit on the cheap series. And it's also what's replacing my Ubiquiti switches. Uh, now what we're doing today is gonna to be doing a fan replacement. We're doing an aftermarket third-party fan replacement to make these switches go from quiet to silent. When I say the switches are quiet, they're actually very quiet. They're not very loud at all. The, uh, the switch is running next to me right now, and you don't hear it on the microphone. I can hear it with my ears, though. And since I like to do recordings and keep a very quiet office area, I'm going to make it silent. So as I've been reviewing it and uh, taking it apart and tweaking with it and doing all this kind of stuff, I've already done the testing to verify this can be done. I've measured the fans that come with it, so I have suitable replacement fans. I have uh, used a multimeter to get the pin out on the, uh, the fan headers to make sure I don't cross any pins and fry something. And I've tried a couple of things already. The first thing I tried was the Noctua low voltage adapters or lo low noise adapters to see if I could just quiet down the stock fans a little bit. And that doesn't work because it actually lowers the voltage going to the fan. And the stock fans being such high performance fans don't start spinning up most of the time if you lower the voltage. If you give them just a little bit of encouragement and actually spin the fan with your finger, then they start up and it's just fine from there forward. But you can't risk it if you um, have the case closed and you can't spin those fans. You don't want to risk that. So that's not a good solution. The next thing I tried was a three pin fan and I actually tried a 120 millimeter computer PC case fan. And that works just fine. You don't get the um, PWM control, so you're going to get full speed all the time. And that's not a problem because the Noctua fans that we're replacing everything with are so quiet that they can run full speed. Also, they don't push nearly as much CFM as the stock fans, so we probably want them running full speed all the time anyways. So three-pin fans work. Four-pin fans would work, but I probably wouldn't risk it. We want whatever our new fans are just to run full speed. The switch does not seem to care, and it doesn't complain unless a fan isn't spinning. If it detects that a fan isn't spinning, it will throw you a warning, but it doesn't halt the switch. The switch will still actually keep running and it doesn't seem to affect anything. So that's really good because I know some servers and stuff will actually freak out if you do third-party fan stuff on them. Uh, now, before we go to the actual video part that I have yet to do, so we're gonna actually get, start doing this in a minute. Uh, the one thing that's really important to check before we do anything is our baseline temperatures. We wanna see how the switch looks now with the stock fans to make sure that we stay within that range once we replace the fans. So the web interface gives you the uh, fan status. We're at low speed, and it tells you your average temperature, which is 43 degrees Celsius. But there's actually a lot more information than this that you can extract from the uh, command line. So let's log into the command line. All right, enable mode. And the command you want is show inventory. Now we get a very, very detailed look at everything here. The uh, CPU temperature, the DPE one and two temperature, the DDR temperature, exhaust temperature, mid temperature, ambient temperature, and the console card. You can see the only thing I'm really concerned about here is probably these DPE temperatures. That's the only thing that's actually really hot. Uh, also, we have our current fan speeds down here as well. So if, for some reason, the Noctua fans don't keep this switch cool enough, I'll find whichever fan or fans are closest to these hot areas and maybe do like a 50-50 swap. But we wanted to make sure we got our baselines first before we do the modification, uh, just to make sure everything stays safe. And if the switch does enter a threshold of unsafe temperatures, it will actually shut itself down to protect it from any kind of permanent damage. Now, as far as the uh, the pinout on the fan headers, it does use a standard pinout. I tested this and verified it's the normal pin layout, but it doesn't use a standard connector. The, uh, the plastic guides that prevent you from putting in the connectors backwards are actually all four pins apart on the switch versus a standard uh, fan connector that uses only a three pin divider. So what that means is you have to modify your fan connectors and uh, scrape off or grind off or do something with that, that extra guide so that it fits on. 
So the first ones I tested, I've just done it with a pocket knife or a metal file. Uh, but tonight I actually broke out my Dremel and we'll use the Dremel to do the, the uh, rest of the work. So we'll uh, stop the screen cap here, get into some live video footage, which I'll do a voiceover on later. And then we'll probably come back to screen cap to look at how the switch looks after we've done the upgrade. All right, so we're off to the races. As much as I would love to have real-time footage for you so I can kind of show you everything in great detail, the uh, process ended up being a lot longer than I expected. So I'm going to fast forward through everything and kind of just talk through the bits of it. That way we don't sit here for an insanely long video. First things first, get yourself a nice pre precision screwdriver set to take all the screws out. You have uh, four small screws across the front, three on the back, and three on both sides. And don't lose those tiny screws, then the top plate comes off. The uh, fans themselves have those four pin connectors, and you're going to need to use a Phillips screwdriver to take those out as well. And there's a couple of wire management uh, zip ties in there that you're going to need something to cut to get the fans out with. So what we're using for the replacement fans is the Noctua NF-A4X20 FLX. So those are the uh, 40 by 40 millimeter by 20 millimeter three pin Noctua fans. So we're just in the process of taking all the old fans out right now and cutting those little zip ties that we used um, were used to hold down the wires. Now, as I move along here, I'm thinking this is going to go well. No, no problems at all. I already had dremeled one of the fan connectors, and that process was way faster and easier than what I had done previously, which was using a knife and a file to scrape away at it. So I, I test fit one of the fans, and it fits right in, and I'm really happy with that. Uh, but shortly into this project, I realized a really big issue. <laughs> and the reason why the video took so long. The included fans have smaller screws. The diameter of the screw is smaller than what the Noctua fans use. So when I tried to screw the Noctua fan in, the uh, screw just wouldn't actually tension fit. So what I had to do was use the screws that came with the Noctua fan. So I dug those out of the case and then realized those screws are too big for the holes that are in the side of the uh, fan at, at the side of the uh, switch case. So I was like, holy cow, I'm going to have to um, drill those out. But I'm worried about drilling it out because I don't want to make the holes too big and end up, if I ever have to retrofit the old fans back in, the, the screws will just fall right through. And also, this is sensitive electronics. You don't want metal shavings and you don't want uh, to accidentally over drill and, and penetrate something sensitive and break it. So I was just trying to eyeball the drill bit sizes the best I could. And the first one I chose was actually a little bit too big because I figured if it wasn't big enough, it wasn't going to work. And it was big enough that I really couldn't drill through easily. And I felt really worried about causing damage. But after trying to do it for a while, I was like, hey, I can just actually kind of screw the uh, new screws through. They don't have to be completely loose fitting. They'll thread themselves through as long as I open up that hole just a little bit. So that's when I switched to a 3 16 bit, which is perfect for the job. It goes through really easy. It's just barely bigger than the hole, so it's not hard to get the drill bit through. It was <clears throat> much easier to control, and I didn't feel worried about accidentally damaging something. It just barely let the new screws fit through, but the hole stays small enough that if I have to put the old fans back on, I can. So basically, I spent a little bit of time here just drilling out all those holes and then making sure I didn't have any burrs stuck that I needed to remove and then getting all the metal shavings out of the switch case because I don't want any kind of shorts. So, so far the list of tools we're going to need is the precision screwdriver, a drill, a 3 16 drill bit, our fans, the NFA4X20 FLXs, and uh, possibly like a file or sandpaper if you need to remove some burrs, a lot of patience, a steady hand, and of course, you know, just take your time because if you rush it and mess it up, there's no going back. Now, once I did that, I started actually fitting the fans in and they fit in just fine. 
So I didn't, ahead of time on this video, um, modify all the fans, only just one for a test fit. So this is when I had to break out the Dremel and start uh, grinding away that um, fan pin guide. And if you uh, look at the guides, it's the one not on the farthest edge, but the one that's more towards the center. That one has to be ground flat so that you can fit these fan connectors on. Since I don't want to Dremel my hands, I ended up using some vice grips to just barely hold the, the fan pin header on, and that way I could just use the Dremel and Dremel it away. I was really surprised with how fast and easy that made the process. It, it went from taking 10 to 15 minutes to do one of these to 10 or 15 seconds. So the Dremel and the vice grips work really well. And I was just using a uh, standard drum sand bit on the Dremel. So at this point, I've kind of gotten into the vibe of it. I've got the holes drilled out. I, I realize that that's working. I've got my method for grinding down the fan connectors, and that's working really well. It's just a matter of starting to actually uh, install the fans, which use two screws, and I'm using the, the Noctua screws, and then uh, clipping the fan uh, pin headers in. Now with the PWM, you want to be very conscious of which ones you plug the fans into and make sure you pick the right ones because you want the fan control to control the right fan. Now that we're using three pin fans, they're all going to run full speed all the time, so it actually doesn't matter. I still matched the original ones just because I wanted to, but I probably could have changed it a little bit and maybe had some better wire management. And that was really more of the last few minutes was simply trying to get the wire management the way I liked it. I didn't want to block too much airflow, especially because these new fans are so much lower CFM, about one third of the maximum CFM from these Noctua fans versus the stock fans. So I got to make sure all that air gets delivered to its target. So we're moving along and we're down to the home stretch, getting those last fans in, getting our pen, uh, pins set in, making sure you do not cross the pins. Now that you only have one guide on the far edge, you could very easily put it down and think that you have it in the right spot and you don't. So take your time, double check everything. At this point, I've got all the fans installed and I'm plugging in the switch just to make sure it's going to boot up and run and not show any errors. So I can barely tell that the fans are running. They are so quiet that you can't even hear them. So I actually grabbed a piece of paper to show you guys that they are, in fact, actually moving air because it was blowing the piece of paper around. I let the fan get far enough along that I knew all the fans were working and it was going to not report any failures. And then it's time to reinstall the case. So just take your time and do this carefully. Make sure the back piece of it is completely seated downward because you have to have all of those rear connections come through the back. The top part of it can pretty much just fit on top and it doesn't really matter too much. Also, I have a surprise extra portion of DIY for everybody in this video. I have some homemade brackets here too. So the factory brackets weren't included with this switch and I couldn't find them anywhere online, at least not for anything that's the same price. So after trying a couple of different things and not having great success with my limited amount of tools, I ended up finding that the Cisco 3850 series brackets, the way that these have so many different holes in a grid pattern, there's some holes that line up super close to where these need to go. And I just had to drill them out with a hand drill and it gave them just enough extra space that they fit perfectly. In addition, there's some little divots on the back of the brackets, and that has to be ground away because they don't fit flush and flat unless you do that. So you would need some tools to do it, but these can be had on eBay. I got these for $6 versus the $60 for the stock you know, S2500 ones. So that's a good little extra tidbit of knowledge there if you have the, uh, the capability of doing that yourself. They don't quite line up exactly to the factory brackets as far as how uh, far out the switch sits on the rack it's like an extra less than a quarter of an inch but it is noticeable if you have two switches right next to each other and at that point it is ready to go hook it back up and test it out so let's get back onto the computer and see what happens all right everybody it's time to check in post surgery and see how we're doing with that fan modification i'm sure that i'll go over all the details of the actual mod during the live video footage when i do the voiceover part for it later in the post-production of the video. But this is real time for me 
I've had the switch plugged back in for over an hour to make sure that it had time to heat up. And I plugged in all this stuff that used to be in it. Uh, when I took the baseline temperatures, it actually was empty except for just two connections. So I'm actually putting the switch under more load now than I did earlier. So what I want to do is check in and see if our temperatures are good and nothing's freaking out. I can tell you right now that there's no warning light. If a fan has an error, there's a red LED that flashes on here and we get a warning. There is no warning, so it is accepting those fans without any issues. I'm sure you saw that I had some uh, surprises <laughs> during the installation, but it all went well. And I took all my baseline readings before I started the modification so I can make sure that we maintained our baselines either close to them or, hey, maybe even better, right? So we had an ambient temperature of 78.3 degrees earlier. As reported by my temperature sensor in here, it is now 76.6. So it's a little bit cooler in here, so that's going to give us a little bit cooler temperatures. Uh, the average temperature as reported by the web interface was 46 degrees Celsius. It is now reporting 42 degrees Celsius. And of course, these detailed specs, we need to go into the uh, CLI to see those. So let's log into the CLI. Not root. All right. All right, so here is the before and after. CPU, it was 49, it is now 36. DPE zero, the one I was worried about getting too hot, uh, was 69, it is now 67. DPE1 was 58, it is now 65, the DDR was 38, it is now 28, the exhaust was 28, or is now 28, it was 39, uh, mid temps 50, and now 44, ambient 44, uh, 41, so actually the, uh, the switch was supporting cooler ambience earlier. And the fans, of course, were on PWM before, so they could change based on the need. Now they're going to be always statically locked at 5,000 RPM. The, uh, the mod itself was for noise. It, again, this wasn't a loud switch to begin with, but it is not even whisper quiet. Now it's silent. You can't hear it. It is not even possible to hear the switch, even if you put your ear right up next to it. So it, uh, <laughs> it worked. It worked really well. Uh, the uh, DPE temps are what I'd have to keep an eye on because they're actually, even though almost every single temperature here is dr dramatically lower, those are not. However, what you need to be worried about is your thresholds. These are the thresholds set by HPE Aruba. And this is when it says, hey, this is too hot. I'm shutting down because if I don't, there's going to be trouble. So the one I'm worried about it being this one it doesn't get into critical until 110 degrees Celsius, which is nearly double the temperatures that we're running now. So I'm not really worried about this at all as far as being over temp. So the mod worked really well. The fans fit in well. There was, the Dremel worked amazing to uh, change the, the fittings so that it would fit on. The, uh, having to drill out the holes for the screws, that was the big surprise, but it wasn't too difficult. And uh, if I ever needed to, I can still put the old fans back in because the holes, I was afraid if I made them too big, the old screws would just fall through. But I was able to widen the hole just enough that that won't happen. And if I ever really had to, I could throw some washers on there. So uh, I hope the video was entertaining. And I now have a one-of-a-kind HPE Aruba S2500 with the Noctua fans that is dead silent. So it's time to close up shop on the video. I hope everyone enjoyed it. You found it entertaining, educational. Of course, if you want to do this mod yourself, now you know what you need to do and what to expect. I would love to see any kind of comments down below in the comment section. Other than that, you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time.